Francis Sangorski was one half of the firm Sangorski and Sutcliffe, a renowned firm of fine bookbinders who opened their firm in 1901 in London. In 1905, um, they began producing very fine jeweled bindings. And you can see here one of the magnificent jeweled bindings produced by the firm in their early years. These bindings were sumptuous, uh, expensive, and showed the extreme value of the book for its owner. In 1884, Elihu Vetter produced the first illustrated edition of the Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam. Vetter is an American expatriate artist living in Rome, and he was in inspired by his surroundings in Rome and adopted a classical iconographical program um, using uh, allegorical figures and such, and symbolic figures and motifs such as the skull. Now, um, Sangorski had dreamt for a very long time. He had bound many different Rubaiyat editions, but he had always dreamed of binding Vetter's Rubaiyat. It was the ultimate illustrated edition for him. So Sangorski's binding um, used many different materials. There were inlays of silver, satin wood, mahogany, um, ivory, and then he also onlaid, which is layers of different colors and textures of leather. Um, in addition to over 1,050 jewels, uh, rubies, garnets, topaz, turquoise, semi-precious and precious stones just bejeweled the covers of the great Omar. Once the book was completed, the firm decided it was time to sell and decided the best thing to do would be to ship it to the United States. So they put it on a boat to ship across to be displayed and hopefully sold um, in America. When it reached America, it was stopped at customs Due to a technicality, they wanted to charge a very large duty on it, and a disagreement ensued, and eventually, because the disagreement could not be settled, the book was shipped back to England. So the book was put on a boat and shipped back to England, where the situation degraded even further. First, uh, there was one offer for the book at well below the price that Sangorski and his supporters wanted for it, which was rejected, and then it was decided that the book would be put up for auction. And unfortunately, at the same time the book was put up for auction, there was a coal strike, and the economy temporarily tanked, and the book ended up selling for less than its reserve. It was valued at approximately 1,000 pounds and sold for only 450 pounds to an American dealer in New York and was put back on another boat to go across to America. So it finally was sold, but Sangorski was absolutely crushed by the uh, low amount that it brought in. So it's put on this ship to go to its new home, and that ship was the Titanic. And the great Omar sunk on the Titanic and is now, I suppose, a pile of jewels at the bottom of the ocean, all 1,050. The leather long ago degraded, the book gone forever. And to add to that, Sangorski actually drowned um, just a few weeks later after he was apparently trying to save a woman from drowning and did not himself know how to swim. So the myth lives on um, in these black and white photographs.